Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys here, and in this video, we are taking a look at a tutorial I had done in the most recent issue of Photoshop User Magazine, where we took a rather interesting texture that I shot with my iPhone and then used it to dress the text to make it look like it was kind of this kind of covered in snakeskin kind of text as you can see here. Now what I wanted to show you in a video here is a couple of last minute finishing touches I did um, to go ahead and finish off the overall look and we'll start with the background effect. Now I'm going to use the exact exact same texture that we use to dress the text and I'm just going to go ahead and just bring that back up here and there it is. And let's go ahead and just carry this theme throughout the design. I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop it over. And I'm adding the shift key as I drag and drop so it lands in the center. Now it's pretty large, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in free transform by pressing command or control T. And then you press command or control zero. And that expands the document out so we can see the transform box. So I'm going to go ahead and add a shift and option. I'm going to hold both of those keys down and go ahead and scale it down to the center. And then once I've done that, let's go ahead and just bring this down here and then rotate it slightly. Again, just hold down the shift key when you rotate. Now we'll go ahead and constrain it to the 45 degree angles, or I think it's every 15 degrees actually, um, until we get it turned completely 90 degrees. There we go. Let's go ahead and rescale that back up here just a little bit. So we need it to just kind of encompass the background of the text area there. So I'm just, uh, notice I put the layer underneath the 3D layer, and let's go ahead and give it a color. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the hue saturation and just do it directly. I notice I'm not using an adjustment layer. I'm just going to go ahead and make this correction directly to the layer itself. So let's go ahead and just kind of give it a blue kind of um, cast to it there because blue is going to uh, look good against the um, or the yellow, the yellowish text is going to look really nice against that blue background there. Now it looks um, Unfinished, of course, because the edges are cutting off right there in the middle. So let's go ahead and add a layer mask to that background texture. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the gradient tool. And we're going to use the foreground to transparent gradient right up here. If you just click on the preview here. And let's go ahead and choose the second gradient here. This is the one I used 99% of the time. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make a, use a linear gradient. And down here, let's we'll make sure the foreground color is set to the default colors just by pressing the D key on the keyboard and then press X so it puts the black in the foreground swatch there. And it's going to come in from uh, each of the sides and top and bottom of the texture here just give it a nice fade as we go in and then you can see that gives me a really interesting background texture element there. Now you'll notice um, there's a shadow here that's being cast by the text itself, that wasn't part, or we didn't notice um, originally, and that's because we were building this effect on a black background already. But now that we've placed a texture behind it, we can see that shadow pretty good. So let's go ahead and get rid of that by jumping into the 3D panel here, and let's go ahead and open up the Properties panel along with it. And we're gonna go ahead and select the environment property right here and let's jump over to the properties panel. And you'll notice down here where it says ground plane, we have the shadow settings and it's default set at 60%. So let's go ahead and use the scrubby slider and bring that to zero and then the shadow goes away. Now another aspect of this text as I was talking about in the magazine article is that it is still one um, three dimensional unit here. So if I can see if I rotate it around, you can see the rounded edges of the facing of the text and how it's interacting with the light as I move it around. But what I wanna be able to do is move around each letter individually. Now, after I've applied all my surface effects and all the lining and everything is good, then you'll simply go to the 3D menu here and go down and choose Split Extrusion. Now, what this does is it keeps everything still on a single 3D layer. You'll notice over here in the Layers panel, it's still one 3D layer, but now I can go in and select each letter individually and rotate them um, by themselves now. So they're, now they can interact with each other. Notice if I move it into the, uh, the letter K there and just kind of have it where it looks like it's wrapping around in there. So see how, it's, see how they're interacting? It's casting a shadow here. And so these various elements now can be made to interact with each other in um, more interesting ways now that you have gone ahead and dressed up the text and everything like that. So just another way to think about 3D, especially when you're doing it with text, because text inherently is separate characters, and being able to go in here and just separate them and create a entirely new look altogether is pretty exciting. And if I go ahead and select my current view, you can see what's going on here. 
is that now it's tilting and rotating the text in all different angles. So a lot of really cool things you can do. And of course, when you are done, just simply go ahead and do a render. And we'll go ahead and just let that run through and go ahead and render the effect. But there you can see the fun you can have with 3D text and textures here in Photoshop CC.